O oh God, we gather today to remember the love and sacrifice of Jesus and to contemplate what it means to have faith in the midst of suffering, loss, and injustice. Even in this story of broken lives and broken hearts, we trust in your presence, your powers, and your ways. We trust that in the midst of suffering, you, O oh God, are comfort. When injustice appears to triumph and justice appears to have been crucified, you, O oh God, are the one who calls us to believe the good news and act with justice. When we stray from the path on which you lead us, you, O oh God, offer grace that invites us back to your ways. When night surrounds us and we are fearful and lacking vision, you, O oh God, are the light that finds, surrounds, and guides us. When the world groans under the bonds of oppression, violence, and indifference, you, O oh God, empower your people to offer the bomb of courageous compassion and peacemaking. 
When the curtain has ripped, the thunder has rolled, and the world appears to have lost its savior. You, O oh God, are our hope for victory. We wait for you. Amen. It's Good Friday. So much was set in motion that night in the upper room. And so many things happened so fast to get us to this point. Judas fled the room. Jesus and some of his disciples traveled to the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus prayed and his friends struggled to stay awake. And then it was there that Judas arrived with soldiers and Jesus was arrested. For 30 pieces of silver, Judas betrayed his friend and teacher. And the others who were afraid for their own lives fled the scene, abandoning Jesus leaving him to face his trial alone. And then there was a hasty trial where Pontius Pilate was looking for ways to free the innocent Jesus. But the crowd who just days earlier adored Jesus now shouted, crucify him, crucify him. And Pilate, disgusted and powerless, washed his hands of the whole thing and turned Jesus over to be crucified. That painful and powerful series of events happened at a mind-boggling speed, bringing us to this moment. It's shortly after noon, and we gather to remember those moments and to remember that dark, difficult day. For his trial, Jesus was severely beaten and then, in an act of humiliation, they draped a purple robe around his shoulders and placed on him a crown of thorns. Not as a symbol of regalness or respect, but as one of mockery and disrespect. Imagine the humiliation. Just days before, coats were thrown down and palms were waved as their king entered the holy city. And today, a crown of thorns is twisted into his flesh. A crown not fit for a king, but for a criminal. Thorns, a symbol of sin and cruelty and humiliation poke and rip into Jesus' scalp and forehead. I want to look away, but I can't. But there's too much pain, too much sadness, too much hate. You and I have the benefit of the resurrection story. But we still need Good Friday. It's important that our steps of Lent and our path to Easter include this moment. The abandonment. The suffering. The despair. The jeering crowd. The cruel guards. The crown of thorns. Let us pray. O oh God of infinite love and power, we gather today on this Good Friday to reflect on the passion of the Christ. We are utterly humbled in the presence of such love and mercy. Open our hearts today to the goodness of Good Friday and fill us with your love and powerful spirit of holiness. Remove from us all sin Offer us anew this life in Christ that makes all things new. Amen. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, 
one on each side and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priests of the Jews protested to Pilate, do not write the King of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be King of the Jews. Pilate answered, what I have written, I have written. I fain would take my stand. The shadow of a mighty rock within a weary land. A home within the wilderness, a rest upon the way. From the When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them. With the undergarment remaining, the garment was seamless. 
woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said one to another. Let's decide by lot who, get, who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled that said, they divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. Your only son, no sin to hide, but you have sent him from your side to walk upon this guilty side and to become the Lamb of God. Your gift of love they crucified, they laughed and scorned him as he died. The humble king they named a fraud and sacrificed the Lamb of God. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple who he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Thank you. 
later, knowing that everything had now been finished and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of white vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it and put the sponge on a stalk of a hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit.
Now it was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath, they asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down. The soldiers therefore came and broke the legs of the first man who had been crucified with Jesus, and then those of the other. But when they came to Jesus and found that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. The man who saw it has given testimony, and his testimony is true. He knows that he tells the truth, and he testifies so that you also may believe. These things happened so that the scripture would be fulfilled. Not one of his bones will be broken. And as another scripture says, they will look on the one they have pierced. Joseph of Arathamea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jew <clears throat> Jewish leaders. With Pilate's permission, he came and took the body away. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and L about 75 pounds, taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it 
the spices in strips of linen. This was in accordance with the Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden, a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was a Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you Let us pray. Oh God, you hold a mirror before us, and we see love, and we see hate. We see crucifiers, and we see the crucified. Forgive us where we have crucified love, your love for ourselves, for others, for you. Do not abandon us where we have abandoned ourselves, where others have abandoned us where we know the path of crucifixion and rejection and being forsaken. Take us from the cross to hope and new beginning. Amen. By his stripes we are healed. By his wounds we are made whole. Go in the name of Jesus Christ and live in the salvation that has made possible by the goodness of this Friday.